have been lots of accounts of ghostly activity throughout this hotel. The San Remo has sort of disturbed guests, upset guests. Some guests have seen apparitions in this hotel. I myself have experienced things in this hotel. The madam, the painted lady, she has a very mysterious history here. You know, a lot is not known about her. There are rumors that she had a brothel in the Haight-Ashbury, but she was an ex-madam. She did live here, the owners did know her. And she wanted a place to retire. North Beach was a very social uh, happen in town at that point. She just wanted some place nice and quiet, obviously surrounded by artists and, and different socialites. She stayed here for a number of years in room 33, which is where she actually passed away. The owners, unfortunately, uh, hadn't seen her for a while. They always knew she locked her door, so they thought, well, the only way we're going to be able to get to her is to go through her window. The owner went ahead and stuck his hand in the window, and unfortunately, she was dead. So he had a handful of her hair and her ice-cold body. She really loved 33. That's where most of the activity is with the, the madam or the painted lady. There's been some interesting stories about whispers. Stories of things moving in that room, people hearing noises in that room. Sometimes there's a knock at the door, a guest will open the door and nobody's there. We had an interesting personal story in there with our, our group. We had checked into the hotel and of course 33 was one of the rooms that we had. So we went in there and I hung my coat up in the armoire. And there was one extra hanger in the closet I decided just to lay mine on the bed. So he left his coat on the bed, and we left the room, went to get our equipment, and when we came back, there was a hanger on the bed on top of his coat. And I'm like, did you put that there? No, no one had been in that room. We had locked that room. We're the only ones who had the key to the room. So no one could have entered that room. Apparently, the madam, the painted lady, wanted us to hang our coat up. It sort of startled us a little bit about the journey that was gonna happen that evening throughout the hotel. The Painted Lady is really a mystery. No one really knows very much about her. San Remo has been a hotel that I've had a love for for many years. It's such a unique place. It has an intense history, and there's a lot of ghost activity here that's been told over the years. And through my friendships with the owners and the manager, um, I've been very fortunate to come in here and document some of the hauntings and experience some of the hauntings that are here. Room 42 is a very interesting room because there is not just one ghost story, there's two ghost stories. The one that is most common is primarily the young girl that is often seen in the hallways. Many guests have seen a girl in her teens with dark brown hair. She's wearing a bonnet and a dress. She is known to knock on the door sometimes. Guests will be staying in the room, and then there'll be a knock on their door. And they'll look, and then there's nobody there. The knocks aren't very high on the door. They're usually lower on the door. So people often are associating it as probably a little girl or a young girl. My theory is because there was families in those rooms, they're so small, where did the kids go to play? Probably the hallways of the San Remo Hotel. 
and this has happened to numerous guests throughout the years. And you know, one of the things that I do as, as a ghost researcher is I look for validations of stories. And one of the ways to validate a ghost story is to have eyewitnesses that have the same account and they are not related at all. So you have a period of time of guests not related telling you the same exact story. So you start to think there has to be something valid to this story. Some believe the little girl may be the little girl that uh, the manager, Kenley, saw in the air shaft. The air shaft goes all the way up the hotel, and there's actually windows from the rooms facing into the air shaft. It actually would be easy to fall in. And that's one of the theories, is that maybe this girl who was playing slipped and fell into the air shaft. She's actually been seen through the window kind of hovering inside the air shaft. She's still there. She's still playing in the hallways upstairs. And people still see her, and they still hear the knocks on 42. Another story that goes on there, there was a tragedy there. Unfortunately, a gentleman uh, in the 70s, in his 40s, committed suicide in that room. He was very, very depressed. I believe he didn't have any family or any friends to speak of. And one day he just couldn't take it, so he just ended up shooting himself in the head. With that much depression and built up loneliness, it's probably gonna have an impression on the room. Now, he is known to be in the room. People do hear his voice in the room. Uh, there are some times where things seem to be moving around in the room when no one is in the room. I know there have been staff members that have heard in uh, room 42 movement, and then they would go in there and there would be nobody checked in and there would be nobody in the room. It still lingers, and I think anybody who stays in that room is gonna feel that, that despair and that gloom and tension in the room. It really is compelling when you have this sort of personal experience. You know, it's, to me, it helps validate that there really is something going on in room 42. In 1911, there was a very interesting tale that happened here with a double murder at a wedding. The wedding massacre, since this was, North Beach was really, really, a, like I said, social family town. And the new California Hotel at that time, which is what the San Remo was called, was probably the last large family style restaurant left in North Beach. So it was considered the, the place to go. Down in the restaurant, there was a wedding of uh, the Belle of North Beach. Uh, she was really one of the most beautiful women of North Beach. And she had decided that she was going to get married and they were going to have the reception down in the restaurant. They were having a really lovely ceremony. Everything was going great. And then one of her jealous ex-boyfriends or suitors decided that he would crash the wedding. He had a crush on her. She was not really that interested in him, but he obviously had a fondness for her. Jack wandered into the crowd, watching the guests have fun and, and dancing for a while. 
and had a few insults thrown at him. It sort of started with an argument in the restaurant and a fight happens and guns are drawn and bullets are flying. Unfortunately, the ex-boyfriend ended up uh, shooting uh, a couple of the guests. The two guests were rushed to a hospital and both of them died. Tony Gatelli actually died in the hospital, but it's said that perhaps his spirit roams the restaurant of the San Remo Hotel. Perhaps looking for someone who shot him, trying to find out answers. So there have been a lot of incidences in the restaurant where people have had strange things happen to them. They hear things. Uh, I myself have experienced some strange things in the restaurant. Uh, when we were investigating, there was a dark shadow figure that moved across the room. One of the most bizarre things that, ever, that has really ever happened to me as a ghost researcher, it was three in the morning and we were investigating all night and I had to sort of do a double take. There certainly was something there. And then of course we go, we try to grab our cameras and snap pictures and it's gone. For the first time I saw an apparition, which was of a young, shorter man that slipped back here. To see an apparition is really the holy grail for a ghost hunter. The San Remo has been a hotel that I've had a love for for many years because it's such a unique place. It has an intense history. And there's a lot of ghost activity here that's been told over the years. One story that is really fascinating is people often see on the second floor by the stairwell, there's a bookcase and there's often an apparition of a woman that is seen there. People often see a mystical orb. Kind of translucent, right in front of this antique bookcase. And they hear creaks and they feel cold spots even when it's really, really warm out. And it's always in the exact same spot right in front of the bookcase. And it's a bit of a mystery who she is. I mean, whether she was a cleaning person here, or whether she may have been a resident of the hotel. She could be a victim of the uh, earthquake. She could just been a long-term resident who's not going anywhere. There was tainted water in San Francisco. Right after the earthquake and the fire, there wasn't a lot of water here, so they had struck it in from Oakland. Perhaps she had some uh, bad tainted water and passed away in, in the hotel. Her history has been uh, very hard to find. You know, it's really hard to be a researcher here in San Francisco because of the great earthquake and fire in 1906. A lot of those records were burned. One of the interesting things about ghosts or apparitions is often people think there are spirits of the actual deceased, and a lot of times they're not. There's a, a phenomenon called place memory, which is uh, known for residual hauntings, where she's always seen the same place, the same times, the same dress, and it's sort of like a recording that plays itself over and over. I suspect that the woman at the bookcase is a clear example of a residual haunting. When we did our investigation, we actually had our own experiences with hot and cold. We both found really cold spots in the same section. She's like, come over here and feel this. I'm like, what? I, I, I'm kind of a skeptic with the hot and cold. We're like, wow, this is incredible. It's in the same exact spot every time. Then I did some EVP work and got a really clear EVP of a woman saying, nine want to know. What does that say? Nine spirits want to know? What do they want to know? But it was very clear, and it was while we were actually taking readings up on the ceiling right by that same spot. So how many spirits are in that hotel?
you know, San Remo has been a hotel that I've had a love for for many years because it's such a unique place. It has an intense history and there's a lot of ghost activity here that's been told over the years. San Remo Hotel um, built after the earthquake and the, the specific reason it was built, built by the founder of Bank of America, uh, was built to house those that were homeless after the earthquake. Some of those long-time guests are still long-time guests even though they've passed on. And we have little, the ghost of a little girl playing in the hallways. There's things that are seen and heard and whispers. There have been lots of accounts of ghostly activity throughout this hotel, which has sort of disturbed guests, upset guests. Some guests have seen apparitions in this hotel. Others have experienced moving objects in this hotel. I myself have experienced things in this hotel. So here we are on the first floor where the apparition of the sailor is seen. There is a serviceman in full uniform that is often seen in the hallways here on the first floor. And it's quite an interesting story because this used to be a waterfront hotel. And because it was a waterfront hotel, a lot of servicemen would come here and because it was really cheap lodging. So it doesn't surprise me that you would have a sailor in this hotel haunting it. The sailor in the hallway has been seen by many guests over the years. He actually walks the halls of the first floor of the hotel. And many wonder if perhaps that sailor was on shore leave. So many, many people from abroad servicemen stayed at the San Remo. That wasn't an uncommon situation. Maybe the sailor was tormented with experiences and, and nightmares of the war. And he actually is reliving them and he's frustrated and he's wandering the halls of the San Remo. looking for answers, you know, wondering, is he gonna go back to work? What's gonna happen? So he's probably frustrated just walking those halls, wondering what his future is gonna be. 